Welcome to the new topic of using units of measurement, which can be found in the strand measurement and geometry. This lesson will be dedicated to lesson one, choose units of measurements. The learning goal for this one is to see how different units of measurements are used in the real life world. And the success criteria for this one is to choose the appropriate units of measurement for either length, area, volume, capacity, and mass. I've gone ahead and grabbed a few examples from the Essential Assessment Program. And the ones that I want to highlight are the first four questions because they hold the most importance in regards to uh, different types of uh, what's called conversion. So the most basic of conversions looks at how we convert our units of measurement in, within Australia and within um, and also in England and some parts of Europe. Uh, and this is just uh, what's called the metric system. We know that one centimetre, uh, which is a specific length which you can find in your ruler, is also the same as 10 millimetres. Uh, one metre is then the same as 100 of these centimetres, and one kilometre is the same as 1,000 of these metres. So you can see that this, can, uh, this conversion system uh, incrementally goes up by a factor of multiplying by 10 each time um, as it goes as it goes up. This is different to the uh, American version. Uh, they use an imperial system, which is uh, completely different, uh, not as linear, not as systematic, quite random and arbitrary. Um, I'm displaying a picture now so you can see the difference between metric and imperial. Um, metric is a, a nice uniform method and it just makes measuring things and converting very, very simple. So in this question here, we're going to use this table to help us answer the first question, how many meters are there within a kilometer? But well, we know that one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters based on this conversion. So that right there is our answer. Very simple. Um, and then the second one, I'll just move the screen to the left a little bit. There you go. Um, the next one, how many square meters are there in one hectare? So square meters now is looking um, not into uh, one dimensional length, but now two dimensional length where we have a length and a width. So how many square meters are there in one hectare? Now one hectare is the same as 10,000 squared meters, 10,000 squared meters. Um, so this, uh, answer 10,000 square meters is this one here. Now what this is just saying is that if we were to take the most generic version of an area of some sort, like this, now let's just look at the area, okay? So the area of, of this in itself. And say for instance, we went 100 meters across and 100 meters up, if we were to look into this at bird's eye view. To get the area, this is just 100 times 100, which is 10,000 square meters, which is also considered as a hectare. Now, I like to visualize this length whenever we go to a sporting, um, a, a sporting festival of some sort, and you see how they do the 100 meter race or the 100 meter sprint, so it's a start to uh, finish. That's how long 100 meters is. It's almost the length, uh, a little bit bigger, um, of the actual uh, stadium um, size where the people sit. Um, if you were to then get that and make it perpendicular and go 100 meters that way and then get the area, that's approximately one hectare. That's how I like to visualize it. The next one looks at how many kilograms there are in one ton. So one ton in kilograms, we're now talking about weight. Um, how many kilograms are there in one ton? Well, one ton is the same as 1,000 kilograms. And one kilogram is the same as 1,000 grams. So one ton, 1,000 kilograms, is this one here. And how many liters are there in one cubic meter? Now this one is talking about the conversion of uh, a liquid measurement, which is uh, considered as liters, and then converting it um, back and forth to volume. Right? So there's this volume to a, a liquid amount, 
um, conversion going on here. So how many liters are there in one cubic meter? Well, one cubic meter here is the same as 1,000 liters. And again, how I visualize what one cubic meter is, if I were to picture uh, one meter, so one giant step that you would take as a person, uh, and then go one meter up, like this, and then one meter deep, well, it's almost like a quite a big size giant, um, giant cardboard box. That's how I like to visualize it. Um, and then within here, you were to fill, say some type of liquid like water, if we were to fill this whole thing up, assuming that it doesn't leak through the sides or anything, this would be 1,000 liters. Now, pretty much after question four, the, the direction of the questions will pretty much look like this format, where they ask you how many such and such are in such and such. And you would just use those four different types of conversion charts to help you out. But when it comes to something that looks like this, it can get a bit tricky. So I'll just do one example of this one. This one says, how many liters are in 6.2 cubic meters? How many liters are there in 6.2 cubic meters? Now the problem is <clears throat> the conversion chart doesn't necessarily have something that says, okay, liters is equal to uh, specifically 6.2 uh, cubic meters is equal to this amount of liters. We've only got this little chart here. So I'm gonna write this on the top um, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of space um, purposely on the bottom so you can see what's going on. So one point, uh, one cubic meter is equal to a thousand liters. Now we want to look for what 6.2 cubic meters um, will equal to. So we know it's going to equal some certain amount of liters. We just don't know what. And how you would find that out is we're going to look for what's called the multiplicative factor. Or in other words, what do I have to multiply one by? to get to 6.2. Well, that's pretty simple. It's 6.2. We just have to multiply this by 6.2. So one times 6.2 will give me 6.2 cubic uh, meters. But then whatever I do on this right side, I also apply to the left to get the um, appropriate amount of liters. In other words, if I were to get my calculator out, and I put in 1,000, right? So this is the 1,000 liters multiplied by 6.2, get its multiplicative factor. This will give me 6,200 liters, 6,200 liters. And you can see this harmony between the two. You can see, oh yeah, it does kind of relate. I can see a 6.2 here and a 6.2 here. So it must be 6,200 liters, which is this answer here. So you've got to be careful with, with this. And also you have to see what the multiplicative factor is. Now it doesn't always multiply to 6.2. Sometimes you might have to divide by a factor and then whatever you divide by, you also do it to the other side, okay? So a bit of logic uh, that's involved with this. Um, again, we're gonna do this, but with this example here, I'll just um, cross that out. How many cubic meters are there in 450 liters? So we're looking at this one here. So 1,000 liters is equal to one cubic meter. And we know that there is this 450 liters is gonna to equal to some type of cubic meters, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Now in this case, we're looking for, all right, well, what do we have to divide by to get 450 liters? Now I'm gonna show you um, how you get this, because this one is not as obvious. Here, what we'll do is to find the, the factor that we're dividing it by, Let's just do 1,000 divided by 450. So 1,000 divided by 450. Now your answer might come up with either 20 over nine 
or 2.222 that goes on. Now this is saying that we have to divide this by approximately 2.22. Um, so this to get from here to here, we have to divide this. We have to divide this by 2.2, but I'm just gonna leave it as 20 over nine. And I'll, sh I'll show you why. It has to do with the accuracy with the, the next answer, okay? So in this case here, I know it's divide because this is less than a thousand. So I'm just gonna get one. I'm gonna get one and divide this by 20 over nine, which seems like a bit of an abstract thing to do. 20 over nine. But then you will see how our answer will be 0 0.45, 0 0.45. And there you can see that link, 0 0.45 uh, cubic meters, which is this one here. The reason why we leave it as 20 over nine or and not 2.22 just really has to do with accuracy. If I were to just do one divided by 2.22, um, that gives us 0 0.5, 0.45045045. Yeah, you can see it's 0 0.45, um, but the accuracy kind of loses it. Even if I just do one divided by 2.2, this is 0 0.454545. Maybe sometimes that number could round it up to 0 0.46, which is not necessarily there. So we just keep it in its most basic format, which is 20 over nine. And the last question here, the last of the questions from, oh no, there's two more questions, sorry. Um, this question here, 11, has to do with dragging lengths from either smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So in this case here, this has already been ordered from smallest to largest, but how do you know? How do you know that it's gonna go from smallest to largest? Because you can see here, these numbers are consistent based on what type of unit measurement has been provided. So what you need to do is either convert one or the other to a more consistent way, so that way you can finally measure it. What do I mean by this? In this case, we've got meter meter, and we've got two kilometers and then another meter. I'm gonna change these kilometers to fit the profile of most of the answers here. In other words, if I wanted to get from kilometers to meters, I have to figure out how many kilometers there are within a meter, which is in this case, a thousand, and I have to multiply 0 0.21 by a thousand, and this will tell me um, how many meters there are in this. So let's get this out and we'll put in 0 0.21 and we just times it by a thousand. And do like that, there we go. And this is 210 meters, 210 meters. And again, 0 0.98, just multiply by a thousand and this will give us 980 meters. And now we have this consistency between all of them and we can now tell that 0 0.9 meters is the smallish, smallest, not smallish, smallest, then 125.5, then 210, then 980, then 1050. Because they're all given in meters, we can go ahead and order them. Now just be careful, the question might say smallest to largest, or it might do it the other way and do largest to smallest. You gotta make sure that what units you're using are all consistently the same. And you can have those four different charts that I showed you at the start to help you out. One, two, three, four. Now the last set of questions, uh, I think from question 14 or 15 onwards, has to do with which would be the best unit of measurement for the area of, and it will give you a certain context. In this case, a very large farm. Now I purposely put this example here because the other ones are pretty easy and pretty obvious which one you need to um, which one you need to use and that just really um, comes from the different type of context that you, you use in real life. Obviously it's a bit tricky because we're not in class for, for me to show you but this one here I've had this question pop up a few times within a central assessment and it's caused quite a bit of debate as to what the real answer is. Um, when we're talking about a very large farm some people either use acres and other people use hectares. And this all has to do, all has to do with the size of the farm, but really where you are coming from. Now, what do I mean by this? Um, a lot of people back in the day 
used to use the term acres. Now it's still used to this day. You'll hear a lot of people when talking about their property size or their farms talk in the sense of acres. But when you go to this conversion sheet here, an acre is 400 squared meters. Where does this 400 come from? This is quite a random amount. It's not 1,000, it's 4,000. Where does where does four come from? An acre is actually a very old traditional way of talking about land. A very old traditional way. And some people still use it. But if you want to keep it to the metric system, you will talk about it in hectares. Um, and it's a quite a relatively new approach to talking about large farms to people who do own farms. If you want to see it from a whole holistic and very metric common um, form, you would use hectares. So technically, this is your correct answer. Don't do acres, okay? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to talk about it strictly in hectares and not in acres. It's just this, in, our, in a mathematics, uh, mathematical standpoint, this will be the best unit of measurement. And that concludes this set of questions for this skill. Go ahead and attempt the skill in a central assessment, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.